Hello everyone, Hyper here and welcome to the Big Dumb Strats Guide for Mythic Mod. This video is broken into several sections, so if you just want to watch the one that is relevant to you, you can find the timestamps pinned in the comment section below. I am once again joined by Lozi to cover the tanking information and Shampi to cover healing. If you prefer reading your guides instead of listening to them, you can check out my written guide over on Wowhead, the link to which can be found in the description box. Before we talk about any strategy, let's talk about the mythic mechanic. The only change is the addition of the Ancient Curse debuff, which is a debuff applied to the entire raid in Phase 1. The first set comes out shortly after you pull the boss, and then from there on it will be reapplied to the entire raid every 50 seconds. The Ancient Curse debuff can be removed by either stepping into a Devoured Abyss puddle or being dispelled by a Remove Curse ability. You have 24 seconds to get this curse off of everyone in your raid, otherwise whoever is still afflicted, when the timer runs out, they're just going to get instantly one-shot. Since this debuff deals damage to your entire raid whenever you clear it, it is important to do it in a staggered manner. We recommend simply having your groups assigned and then each of them clearing and stepping into a puddle in a staggered fashion, with giving your healers time in between each group to kind of top your raid off. Briefly mentioning raid composition, this is still an early fight, however we believe that it is made significantly easier by using a 3 tank strategy, where 2 tanks will deal with the boss and a single tank will deal with all of the adds. And with this strategy, you also ignore the adds completely and only deal with them uh, for a very short period of time right when you transition from phase 1 into phase 2. Next, talking about the actual strategy, whenever you pull the boss, you should basically just turn him away, face him towards a wall, and your melee DPS should set up on one side of the boss, while your ranged DPS loosely spread on the other side. This is to make positioning for your third tank a lot easier. The reason behind this setup is that the boss can only cast black wings on a target who is within melee range of him. So if your ranged DPS are set up on the opposite side of the boss from your melee DPS and are out of range, they will never have to dodge this mechanic. This also applies to your third tank. If there is no player within melee range of the boss who is directly in line with your third tank, they won't have to worry about dodging this knockback. However, if Black Wings gets cast either on your range pile or on your third tank, they can simply dip into a Devoured Abyss puddle, and that spell immunity will prevent them from taking damage and being knocked back by the ability. Shortly after pulling the boss, the first set of Devoured Magic debuffs will also go out, and it's important that you get at least one puddle that is close to melee, and then one puddle that can be used by your third tank. And this is of course because this debuff and the puddle that they drop are used for several abilities, from dodging the huge AoE that one-shots you, to clearing your debuff on Mythic. With our strategy, each phase 1, your raid should get 3 adds. The first add should simply be picked up by your third tank, and tank near a puddle until it starts casting Dark Offering. This is to give your ranged DPS a little bit of time to put some dots upon it and get some damage into it, so then later they can ignore it and just tunnel the boss. Once the ad starts casting Dark Offspring, simply move it into the puddle and keep it there for the remaining duration of Phase 1. Then repeat this process with the second ad as well. Tank it near the puddle until it starts casting, then move it into the puddle so it is no longer immune and it slowly gets drained by the Devoured Abyss. However, once the third ad spawns, things change a little bit. You ideally want to still pick up this ad and move it into a puddle so it won't start casting, but make sure to mark it so you know which adds spawn third. And this is because when the boss gets about to 85, maybe even 90% energy, depending on how risky you want to play it, your tank, who is near the boss, wants to taunt this third add in, so the boss will go ahead and consume it. And this will eliminate an entire add from the phase without adding too much mana to the boss's health pool. Once the boss consumes the third add, he will trigger the transition into phase 2. The damage strategy we chose to use for the adds is to have our warrior and our hunter permanently hit them in phase 1, 
And the way they do this is hit the first add until the second one spawns, and since they do physical damage, they will still drain its mana. Then once the second add spawns, they simply switch to it and damage that one until the intermission phase is triggered. At this point, the first add should be pretty much passively drained by the puddle, while the second add will most likely have around 20% mana, depending on how much damage you deal to it. When the intermission is triggered, you want to tank the second add out of the puddle so it can get a Dark Offering cast off, or if it's low on mana, you, your DPS simply want to switch to it and finish it off before it gets a cast. And this is because Dark Offering sacrifices mana to the boss, but since the boss is already at full mana from just transitioning to phase 2, no extra mana will be added to his bar. So if you did this strategy correctly, you will transition into phase 2 without having any adds up. If your second add still has some mana left, just simply DPS it down before it gets another Dark Offering cast off. Phase 2 strategy is super standard, you just want to stack your raid in two camps behind the boss. We recommend just setting up about 10 yards apart and just split your healers so you have half your healers in one group, half in the other. For DPS, it doesn't matter how you split them up. And this is to deal with the Drain Essence debuff. As soon as it goes out, just dispel it. And since your raid is split into two camps, you're just minimizing the amount of people that get hit by the mana drain. Also in this phase, you should have your three tanks and one mobile ranged DPS such as hunters or mages assigned to picking up the orbs that spawn around the room. Each person can cover two pillars and their location is marked on your screen. They simply need to intercept the orb as early as possible, then move into the raid pile to let the debuff time out and give everyone the mana regen and healing bonus. With the amount of damage our raid was doing, we had to go through two intermission phases. Just make sure that in the last boss damaging phase, all your DPS are focusing the boss and no one is actually hitting the adds. For DPS, this is another fight that is fairly straightforward since it's an early boss. Each phase 1 lasts about a minute and 50 seconds, and each phase 2 will last a minute at most if you're barely making the DPS check, but it should be a little bit shorter than that. 2 minute cooldowns should only be used in phase 2 if you're not at risk of killing yourself. Cooldowns such as Fire Mage's Combustion, for example, should be avoided in phase 2, because you're just simply doing so much damage and of course the damage is being reflected to you, you're just going to end up killing yourself. But other cooldowns such as Breath of Sindragosa, which still do a lot of damage but over a much longer period of time, are fairly safe to use because your healers can just heal through that. One thing to mention about DPS as well is that Shadow Priests and Warlocks for example can multi-dot the Dark Manifestations in Phase 1 just with the purpose of generating extra resources, uh, such as Insanity, or if you're a Death Sherlock, for example, you have perfect uptime on a Flashpoint during this. But it's important to note that the adds will be immune to magic damage, so you should only dot them if it's a single target damage increase. So now we'll talk about healing, Mott. In terms of healer comp, you're going to want to bring four healers. There isn't any strict reason to bring any one healer over another, as this boss has both burst and rot damage, as well as stacked and spread healing, depending on the phase he's in. So the main mythic mechanic on this fight applies a curse to every member of the raid, which will kill that player if it's not dispelled within 24 seconds. This mechanic will occur every 50 seconds in phase 1, and once it's dispelled, it will deal roughly 50,000 damage to each member of the raid. It's important to note that you don't need to manually dispel this curse. Instead, you can just step inside the Devoured Abyss circles, and that's going to dispel the curse for you. So because you need to get through all 20 dispels within the span of 24 seconds, there's some amount of urgency in getting people dispelled, but you don't want to be so fast that your healers won't be able to keep up with the raid health. For this reason, we recommend that you assign an order for people to dispel themselves. In our case, we choose to dispel group 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And you'll want to be quick enough so that you can maintain healing cooldowns rolling through those groups. And if you're quick enough, you can squeeze in multiple groups into one cooldown. For example, you can pop a Diva Aura and a Trank and send group one in, get everyone topped up, send group two in, etc. The only other mechanic to make note of in phase one for healers is the Consuming Shadows mechanic. Mott will apply a debuff every 12 seconds that lasts three seconds. And each tick of that debuff will deal raid damage. Moving on to phase two. 
there's a few things that will require healer's attention. The first thing is that every 15 seconds, the boss will apply a dispellable debuff to two of your raid members. One of these will always target a healer, and the other will be on a DPS. For every second that this debuff ticks, Mott will gain 1% mana. Also, once dispelled, the debuff will deal an AoE to anyone in 8 yards of that player and sap 10,000 of their mana. There's two ways that you can deal with this dispel. Either you can have small groups or a loose spread and dispel the two targets immediately so that Mott gains as little mana as possible. Or you can have your entire raid stack on one point and wait for those two targets to run out and then dispel them. The most optimal choice between these two will depend on your healing comp. Other than these dispels, periodically the boss will spawn mana orbs coming from the corners of the room and progress towards Mott. These orbs will deal raid-wide damage when they're soaked, and that damage will increase based on how far they've traveled. Once soaked, the player who soaked it will get a debuff, and when that debuff expires, anyone within 20 yards will gain a 150% mana regen increase buff. With these phase 2 mechanics, as well as the thorns mechanic, you can expect a large amount of rot damage, and you'll need to chain healing cooldowns through phase 2 so that you can keep the raid topped up. You also have an infinite amount of mana to work with, theoretically, so you can just spam as much as you want. Now for the tanking section for Mott. As with most three tank fights, two tanks will be assigned to tank the boss, while a third tank will have a very specific job. If you are one of the tanks assigned to the boss in phase one, simply keep him facing a consistent direction away from melee and swap every two to three stacks when your Shadow Claw debuff drops. Note that Shadow Claws itself deals physical damage up front, but the dot is shadow. Despite the boss's animation, Shadow Claws does not cleave, so don't be afraid to stand on your co-tank. As the third tank, your primary job in phase one is to tank both the first and the second ad in a puddle and to never let them out. Once you pick up your first ad, just go towards the nearest pool that is over 20 yards away from the boss and pretty much plant there the whole phase. If the second ad that spawns is too far away for you to pick up, it will need to be ferried over to you by whichever tank doesn't currently have aggro of Mott. This tank should remember not to run anywhere near the boss with this ad, otherwise he will eat it. Once the third ad in that phase is spawning, whichever tank isn't tanking Mott should pick it up and move it to his zone. After about 10 or 15 seconds, the boss should be above 95% mana. At this point, the third ad should then be pulled towards the boss and eaten. Since Mott can only have so much mana, despite eating the entire ad, he'll only gain that last 5% of his mana bar. That same tank should then taunt the second ad out of the Devoured Abyss, as the first ad should be about dead, um, and it'll instantly cast on Mott, sacrificing 20% of its mana. However, since Mott's shield is still likely full, there's no downside to doing this, as you're not adding any damage requirements. If your raid has not done enough physical damage to kill this ad, just stack it up with Mott in Phase 2, as any damage is commutative at this point. In Phase 2, regardless of what your role is in Phase 1, you'll more than likely be assigned to watch two pillars and to run buffs back to your raid. Make sure to use your movement speeds here while running out to lessen the damage this deals to your raid. Thank you so much for watching this video and if it helped you, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thanks to Champion Lozi for helping me out with this and if you want to watch any of us stream our progression live, you can check out our Twitch channels which are linked in the description box. Also, if you want to quickly reference some information that we shared in this guide or you want to read over it, you can check out the written version over on Wowhead that is linked in the description box. Again, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.